Returning again to the waters of our baptism, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sin before God and in the presence of one another. Gracious and merciful God, we confess to you the truth of our broken lives. We have not trusted your promises or walked in your ways. We have hoarded and squandered the gifts of your creation. We have failed to welcome the stranger and the outcast or make room at the table for the homeless and the hungry. We have neither worked to release the oppressed nor admitted our own captivities. Forgive our sin, heal our lives, and set us free that we might live with your whole creation in the justice and joy of your promised future. God, who is merciful and kind, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, hears the cries of all who plead for mercy, and in these last days has sent Christ Jesus to announce the good news of forgiveness and release to all who are bound by guilt or broken by shame, that they might praise God and serve the world with glad and generous hearts. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Thanks be to God.
Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 4. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is uh, Psalm 133, and you may read responsibly. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Our second reading is from 1 John chapters 1 and 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, and what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Yes, Hi, everybody. Bishop Kristen Kempel here, and I am absolutely thrilled to be able to introduce the Reverend Priscilla Paris Austin. Pastor Paris Austin is the pastor of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in the South Lake Union neighborhood of Seattle, a congregation that takes seriously their calling to be a sanctuary that is open and affirming of all persons of every gender, sexuality, race, ethnicity, ability, age, and status, while aspiring to be anti-racist, knowing it's a journey and not a destination. Pastor Priscilla is a mom of three amazing humans, and in partnership with her spouse of 20 plus years, she lives into her call to justice and love by serving on leadership teams for diversity, youth ministry, and the arts throughout the ELCA, as well as with regional ecumenical partners and within her children's school. I am thrilled that Pastor Austin accepted our invitation to be one of our color amazed preachers. Without further ado, let us welcome Pastor Austin. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the 20th chapter from the Inclusive Bible. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, 
the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Having said this, the Savior showed them the marks of crucifixion. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said to them again, peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I am sending you. After this, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the 12, Thomas, nicknamed Didymus or the twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, we've seen Jesus. Thomas's answer was, I'll never believe it without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand in the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time, Thomas was with them. Despite the doors being locked, Jesus came and stood before them, saying, peace be with you. Then to Thomas, Jesus said, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Don't persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, my Savior and my God. Then Jesus said, you've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of the disciples, but these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing, you may have life in Jesus' name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I am Reverend Priscilla Paris Austin, and I serve as pastor at Emanuel Lutheran Church in the city of Seattle, in Northwest Washington Synod, in the ELCA. We are a congregation that takes seriously our call, our mission to be Christ's presence in the world, in our neighborhood, and in our lives. We take seriously this call to be a sanctuary for all people, all ages, all genders, orientations, races, ethnicities, abilities, economic, housing, and citizenship statuses. Wherever we live, wherever we gather, in our building, in a local park, in each other's homes, or online, we gather as sanctuary. For us, a sanctuary is a place of refuge from the ways of the world that murdered divine love, the systems and behaviors that continue to press down on us or pull us away from God's intention for beloved community. I tell you all of this because context matters. Context matters for us in our Lutheran theology, but context matters in order for you to understand me and for me to understand you. And for us, to understand God's message on this day. You are preparing for Synod Assembly, to gather as community. And so it is of value to ground ourselves in the values of community, the values that are set before us in today's text. So I bring you greetings from the people of Emmanuel and the people of the Northwest Washington Synod. Greetings to all of you in the Northwest Intermountain Synod. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you gathered in this space through time and miles of distance as one body, one people in one faith. Reveal your presence. Reveal your call. Reveal your way of being for us today. Amen.
Today's texts, the Gospel of John and the Acts of the Apostles, both tell us some stories about community, about gathering in sanctuary. And let's begin with John. John sets the scene. He sets the scene post-resurrection and the disciples are locked away in hiding. They have been fearful all weekend. The women have left. They have gone to the tomb to take care of Jesus's body and only returned to tell them of the resurrection. This news that is beyond belief. This news that had them trembling in the evening of the same day that Mary told them this news. They are locked away for fear of temple authorities. Fear. Sometimes we gather as people and we lock ourselves away afraid of the world. Sometimes we can come to church and block out the world as a place to be feared. This is what's happening for the disciples on this day. So we can understand this experience. But in the midst of this, Jesus breaks through the locked doors of their fear. This fear doesn't stop Jesus from showing up and saying, peace be with you. This is the first piece of good news when it comes to gathering as community. Even if we gather in fear, our fear and our locked doors cannot stop Jesus from coming through and showing up and breathing a breath of life upon us. That is the beauty of our Christian community. Jesus always shows up, even when we try to lock him out. The community had gathered where Thomas was. Perhaps he was, perhaps he was off getting foods and provisions for, for, for those who had been gathered. Perhaps he had gone to check on other family members. There's a variety of reasons why Thomas would not have been there, just as any Sunday. There's a variety of reasons why people don't show up. And it's not always a lack of faithfulness. Sometimes it is an actual call to faithfulness that keeps them from the, from the pews. And so Thomas returns, and the good news is the community welcomes him. And the community says, hey, there's this thing that you missed. Now here's where Thomas gets a little confused. Thomas is like, I am not going to believe this until I touch the wounds. How often do we do that, beloveds? How often do people come to us with their, their hurts, their anguish, their news of rejoicing and victory over such anguish? And our response is, unless I touch the pain, I don't believe it existed. I hear this in, in the cries from our Asian siblings. I hear this in the cries of children at the border. I hear this in the cries of children in schools doing gun safety drills. I hear this too often. I'm not going to believe your pain until I can actually touch it. This is most certainly a community that we are familiar with. But Jesus still shows up. Jesus breaks in through the fear, through the disbelief, and says to Thomas, go ahead, touch the wounds, see the scars. But Thomas doesn't have to touch them. Seeing is enough. And he sees the resurrected Jesus 
the new life before him, the joy and possibility of their future. And together in community, Jesus reminds them, you have believed because you have seen. Good for you. Blessed will be those who believe without seeing. And John tells us that he is telling these stories so that we will believe. Believing in each other is such a vital part of community. I don't often talk about safe spaces. I'm actually not interested in creating safe spaces. I'm interested in establishing sanctuary, refuge, and brave space. Places where we can challenge our belief and have it challenged right back. Places where Jesus can show up and say, no, take a look, see it. Let go of your disbelief. And we are held accountable to that moment and the opportunity for reconciliation presents itself. This is the first post-resurrection community. Messy, fearful, stumbling and bumbling their way through understanding what is happening, but doing it together. Bravely venturing out for resources for each other and to care for the, their Lord and returning again, and again, and again. This is community. This is faithful, beloved community. But the, the lesson in Acts sets forth an even greater challenge for us. In Acts, the community of believers is described as being of one mind, one heart, none claiming anything as their own, rather everything held in common. All were given great respect. Anyone needy among them was given what they needed. What is it like, beloveds, to gather as a community that says, what I have is not my own. It is ours. How might we use it? How might we invest it in each other and for the good of God's kingdom? This is beloved community. Eric Law presents an image of blessing called the cycle of blessings. He refers to the current of blessings that flow from God and therefore are our currency in relationships, in faithful serving, in living life in this world as community. There's a currency of truth. There's a currency of relationship. There's a currency of gracious leadership. There is a currency of wellness. There's the currency of money. Yes, these currencies flow through us around us and to us, but, but they are not intended to stop with us. The way Eric Law lays it out, the current God flows 
the blessings into us with these currents, this currency. And then we are to allow that blessing to continue to flow into the world. This is what's happening in the Acts text. The people have come together. They have gathered as one people, one mind, one spirit, one heart, and they are one in resources, one in understanding that everything they have is a gift from God and everything they are is a gift to the world. So as we gather as community, I would urge you all to ponder and prepare your hearts to share from your bounty, to name your needs, to see the wounds of the world, to believe the cries of those who are hurting, aching, I would urge you to unlock the doors of fear. Whether that fear is a fear of change or a fear of the virus, a fear of the vaccine, a fear of the news cycle, the fear of your neighbors, the fear of those who are different from us or a fear of those who are like us. Jesus breaks through those fears. God's blessings and current flows through those doors and offers us peace. Peace, beloveds. May God's peace be with you, that you may be God's beloved community, now and always. Amen. With the whole people of God, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers out before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace. O oh God, unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with the power and love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessings of life forevermore, like dew upon the mountains. Refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You direct the nation, O God, guide all in authority, that they shepherd their people in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You give us a fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together, so that we live in love for one another, and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You share the gift of eternal life in thanksgiving and remembrance. We recall the lives and gifts of those who are now living the endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of the new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good, the body of Christ given for you. Please take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 